Dr. Sednag Jackson, a son of the soil from Ghana, who is a graduate of Oakwood University in Alabama there. We understand he was there with also our very own Pastor Papu, and he's also a graduate of Andrews University in Berrien Springs, Michigan, um, with a Doctor of Ministry de degree. Dr. Jackson has opened four churches in Africa, in Africa, in our continent, where those that are in Africa, and he helped raise seven in the United States of America. This man is not playing. He knows what his mission is here for. He has pastored uh, seven churches in Northern Eastern Conference, and he's currently the senior pastor of the Mount Olive Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you know, you know where he is now. We are told he wrote four books as we unpack him the, for, for the whole week. We are going to be unpacking him the whole week. We'll know about which book he wrote, what it's about and all that. What I like here is a, a world passionate evangelist who loves the Lord and who loves to preach his words to populate heaven and to depopulate hell. We are told even this morning, some members of the board of the church where he is currently at are here, members of the church board, who says we go with our pastor. How nice is that? I hear, you know, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, for those that don't know. It's 5 a.m. here in South Africa, where he is, it's 11 p.m. So it's still Saturday, 11 p.m. That's the God we serve, who is not defined by space, by time, who can bring us all from our different time zones and still meet us, all of us, at our points of need. And our theme is our victor victorious Christ, our victorious Christ, and we can't wait to hear him uh, speak to us. And um, with all, all honor, my, my, my pastor, my brother, our, our pastor, our brother, our elder, Elder Youngson, this is your time. Please unmute and may you deliver, may you thunder that word which the Lord has given to you for us. Amen. I hand over to you. Amen. 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 Amen, Sister Valerie. I appreciate your introduction. I also want to thank my friend, Pastor Papu, for the opportunity, and uh, Brother Easy uh, for the uh, invitation. And I'm glad to be with you, South Africa and beyond. And I hear about seven continents are here. And I also want to acknowledge my people from uh, Mount of Olives, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brooklyn. And they are here also to support so may God bless us all as we worship together. And uh, we want to look to God. Lord, I pray that your power will be manifested this morning among your people to, to draw closer to your children. Help us to feel your presence and, 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 and your presence to banish our fears and, and to restore your people to fellowship with you so that the devil and all his evil deeds will not touch your people and we shall be prepared for your second coming bless us to, uh, this morning and uh, give us a word from the lord uh, to draw us closer to jesus my prayer in jesus name amen our our message our theme our theme uh for this week is our victorious christ you know in simple terms our Christ is victorious. And the sub uh, or the title or the topic for this morning is no need to panic. <laughs> Our Christ is victorious. No need to panic. Peace be still. That's the summary. Uh, but we're going to, uh, I have a motto that I want, I want to uh, uh, share with you every morning. We'll do that. I, I say Jesus, and you and you say victorious. Uh, I say Jesus, and you say victorious. And I say Satan, and you say defeated. And I say Satan, and you say defeated. And I say Satan, and you say he's going down. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. Do that with me, wherever you are. Jesus, victorious. victorious. Hallelujah. Vic Jesus, <laughs> victorious. victorious. Satan defeated. 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 Satan defeated. defeated. And the last time when I say Satan is going down. Oh, so, so last, last one, Satan 
It's going, going down. down. Going down. Mm. Praise the Lord. Uh, the, this virtual prayer ministry is necessary and important because God's people are constantly under Satan's attack. But thank God through the word of God and the power of prayer, God's children begin to realize they are victorious in Christ. This week, I want us to not only uh, to claim, but celebrate that victory in Jesus. My purpose is to minister Christ's victory to our souls and apply its benefit to our hearts and our families and our marriages and our brokenness and to heal our sickness physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and socially. So my emphasis is uh, our commander, Jesus Christ, is victorious, and so we can live victorious lives over the enemy. Our Christ is victorious, so peace be still in your life. Now we go to our scripture, Luke chapter 8. Uh, from verse 22 to 25. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? <laughs> what, what manner of man is this? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Our victorious Christ. As you can see, the devil is an opportunist who attacks you when you are down, destroy you when you are weak, finish you off when you are out. Bible says, as they set sail, Jesus fell asleep, and immediately there came down a storm of wind on the lake. Now, 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 if the devil was ever going to win the victory over Jesus and crush his program, it, is, it was now. So he marshaled all the forces of hell to swallow the Savior uh, 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 and, uh, and his apostles in one big storm. He incited a monster storm against their boat. The wind to slap against them. The sea rage against them. The billows toss high and the waves crash against them. And the clouds blacken, uh, the clouds blacken the sky around them. Death was in the air and the little boat was sinking and the apostles feared for their lives. Forgetting Jesus in their midst, they had tried frantically but in vain to save themselves. Only a matter of time and the old ship of Zion is swallowed by the monstrous storm with our Savior on board. Now let's retrace our steps. The disciples obeying the word of Jesus, obedience, obedience, got into the boat. Jesus being exhausted fell asleep in the boat. And the devil seizing the opportunity try to drown them all having obeyed the voice of jesus to get into the boat you will think it should be a smooth sailing experience but not so bible says there was a storm so powerful their lives were in jeopardy some christians have the mistaken idea that once they give their life to jesus all troubles are over once they return their tithe to god all their financial troubles are over and they are on their way to becoming rich and famous. Once they become Christians, all their, li all their trials are gone. Once they live obedient lives, there should be no troubles in their lives, but nothing can be further from the truth. Jesus said, 
He that lives a righteous life will suffer persecution. It was when Daniel prayed to God against king, the king's decree that they threw him into the lion's den. It was when the three Hebrew boys refused to bow down and worship the king's image that they threw them into the fiery furnace. It was when Joseph refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife that they threw him into Egyptian dungeon. Job suffered not because he was a sinner, but because he was, a, he was righteous. Jesus did not suffer because he was wicked, but because he was perfect and righteous and holy. Oh, just because you have obeyed the law doesn't mean you are exempted from troubles. Christian life is not all troubles, but it's neither trouble free. Jesus said in this world, in this world, in this wicked world, in this world, you will have tribulations, trouble. But be of good cheer. Be, of, be happy eh, to suffer for the name of Christ. Be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Our victorious Christ. Everyone will face a storm in his or her life. But your victory is only in Jesus. Oh, if I can hear you say amen. We are not promised trouble-free Christianity, but we are promised the presence of Jesus for victory. These fishermen thought they were experts on storms because they had dealt with all kinds of storms and survived, uh, survived. But this was a different storm. This was Satan's storm to drown the Savior. So nothing these experienced fishermen could do would control the situation. They were sinking and they knew it. There was not, but there was no help in sight, as far as they were concerned. And to their utter amazement, the master was sound asleep on the stern of the boat on the raging sea, seemingly unconcerned, and the disciple did not know what to do. Oh, and when they could not save themselves, they remembered Jesus and cried out, Unto him in desperation. Master, Master, we perish. The hymn writer captured their frustration when he wrote, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The sky is overshadowed with blackness. No shelter or help is nigh. Carest, carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep when each moment is madly threatening? No grave in the angry deep. Oh, brethren, isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do after we too have tried everything? Everything else and nothing works. Then we call on Jesus in desperate prayers. Lord, save us or we perish. But thank God, Jesus is ever ready to hear our cry and save our souls. Ellen Wise says, never did a soul utter that cry unheeded. Never did a soul utter that cry. Lord, save us. Master, we perish, save us. Lord, save me. Never did a soul utter that cry unheeded. Oh, you mean you, you have not cried uh, that cry. Maybe that's why you don't seem to have answers to your prayers. But, but the soul must cry to God. In times of need. And never did the soul utter that cry. Only he did. Bible says, Master rose up from his sleep. Rebuked the wind and the sea. And they ceased. And there was a calm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then, the master also rebuked his disciples. Where is your faith? Why are you so fearful? And here is where I raise my question. Why is the master rebuking his frustrated disciples who had just had a near-death experience? Why does Jesus question their faith? Ah, lesson number one. And we're going to go over these lessons every morning. Lesson number one. Jesus rebuked his disciples to teach us some lessons lesson number one lesson number one jesus rebuked his disciples because ah jesus did not expect his disciples to go into panic in the storm but rebuke the storm 
the child of God acting in the name of Jesus should never fear the enemy if Jesus is in your life. Oh, I hope somebody hear me this morning. The child of God should never go, uh, 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 should, should never fear the enemy if Jesus is in your life. Jesus wants you to exercise his authority to rebuke the enemy, to calm the storm in your life. Child of God, church of the living God, the remnant church, Jesus says, I give you power over Satan, power to cast out devils, power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead, power to walk on serpents and, and, and to walk on scorpions. And, and no poison shall harm you. Power available to us in the name of Jesus. No panic if Jesus is with you. Here is the key. As long as you stay connected to Jesus, faithful to Jesus, living in obedience to Jesus, living under the authority of Jesus, there should be no need for panic. No need to panic. No need to fear. You have authority over Satan and his and the forces of evil. In other words, when you obey God's will and you face a storm, God guarantees your victory. Hallelujah somebody. Oh, I wish I wish I can hear I can hear some 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 feedback. I, I, I say in other words, when you obey God's will and you face a storm in your life, God guarantees your victory. Brethren, all nature would have obeyed the authority of Adam if Adam had continued to obey the authority of God. It's a chain of command. It's a hierarchy of authority. As long as you remain obedient to uh, uh, your higher authority, Lower authority ought to obey your authority. Oh, I wish somebody can hear this one. <laughs> as long as you remain obedient to your higher authority, lower authority ought to obey your authority. That's how it works. That's how God had designed the universe. That's what the centurion was explaining to Jesus when he said, I am a man under authority. If I say to my master, uh, my servant, go here, he goes. Come here, he, he comes. Uh, so I am I am under authority. I am under a higher authority. I am under Caesar's authority. I'm a centurion. I'm a soldier under Caesar. Caesar's authority. So 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 when I tell my servant under me, my 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 my, my, my servant under me, go here or come here, they are obeying Caesar's authority. So when we obey our higher authority, uh, anybody under uh, 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 under our authority must obey our authority, and our authority is derived from higher authority. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Satan is under our authority <laughs> because we obey a higher authority. <laughs> oh yes, that's what he said. If I said I tell my servant go here, he goes here. Why? My servant is not just. Now, it's not just obeying my authority. He's obeying the higher authority that is over me. When he obey, obeys my authority, he's obeying the higher authority. And so, Jesus, since you are under your father's authority, higher authority, you can speak the word and, and the disease will obey your authority and, 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 and my servant will be made whole. Hallelujah, somebody. My servant will be healed. So, brethren, as long as the child of God is obedient to the authority of Jesus. He has authority over the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. And since the disciples, oh, this is where the rubber meet the road. Since the disciples had obeyed the voice of Jesus to get into the boat, they have obeyed their higher authority. They had to know that no storm, lower authority, no storm could capsize their boat with Jesus on board. No storm. Nature was subjected unto them in the name of Jesus. And instead of panic, they could have rebuked the storm in Jesus' name. And the storm would have obeyed their command. Oh, oh my goodness. How come? How come? How, uh, what, why are you so fearful? That's what Jesus asked them. Why are you so fearful? With Jesus on board with uh, and, and, and giving his command and you have obeyed the command of higher authority. Uh, uh, nature is supposed to obey your command. Why are you so fearful? Brethren, 
as long as the child of the living God is obedient unto Jesus, he has authority over the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. And since the disciples had obeyed the voice of Jesus to get into the boat, they, ha they had to know that no storm could capsize their boat with Jesus on board. Nature was subjected to them in the name of Jesus. And instead of panic, they could have rebuilt the storm in Jesus' name, and the storm would have obeyed their command. As long as the church of the living God is living under the authority of Jesus, she has authority over Satan and his raging sea to calm the storm in our lives. And as long as the child of the living God is living in obedience to God and faith in Jesus, God guarantees your victory over Satan. So the subtitle, the, 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 the topic for this morning is no need to panic. You have authority in Jesus' name over the storm in your life. Peace. Be still. Peace. Be still. So our lesson, our lesson for this morning, our victorious Christ, our theme, our victorious Christ in your boat. There's no need to panic. Stay calm. Calm down. No panic. Peace. Be still in your life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. In Jesus' name. Peace. Be still. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, Pastor Yangson, we ask you to just say a prayer. Shall we pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory you have brought to your children. Help us to understand our authority in Christ to realize our victory because you are victor victorious and you have given us the, vic uh, the victory, uh, the authority uh, through your victory. So help us to exercise that and not to be afraid of the enemy. enemy. So in times of trouble, we can call on your name and victory is ours. Bless your children and draw us closer to experience your presence that your victory will be manifested in our lives to calm all the storms in our lives. To your name's honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen.